Rocky Hour Sports here with Scott Quigg here in the States, man, uh, helping out your, your friend Liam Smith uh, down here at Carson at the Rock Gym. Tell us about how he's looking, man. Yeah, he's, he's looking good. He's, he's just starting his camp now for his big fight on April the 8th um, against Liam Williams. So he's out there getting ready for his fight. I'm fighting on the 29th of April when Anthony Joshua fights. Nice. Um, Vladimir Klitschko at Wembley, so I'm out here starting my camp, so it's all good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a big crowd at all for that fight. <laughs> There's like 90,000. Yeah, 90,000. Yeah, 90, it's going <laughs> to surpass um, the Frotch Grove right. with the 80,000 in. Yeah. They've just opened it up another 10,000, so 90,000, so yeah. be some crowd to yeah. fight in front of. Is, is Frotch, uh, you, you, you know Frotch well? Uh, yeah, I know, I know pretty well. Does, is, do you think he's bothered by the fact that his record was broken by, well, by that fight? Well, it, it, he put. He did an interview the other day. Says he'll be outside with a clicker, making, <laughs> making sure it's a legit. If it's broken, it's a legitimate. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Want to ask you, man? Um, when your former rivals this weekend, uh, Carl Frotch uh, lost the, the Carl rematch. Frampton. Carl Frampton. I'm sorry, Carl, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Carl Frampton uh, lost the rematch to uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Yep. Uh, what do you think about that fight? I thought it was uh, a good fight, but I thought Leo Santa Cruz. Did a great job in changing up what he needed to do from the first fight. He went away, he's obviously studied what he did, come back with a totally different game plan, totally different style of how he normally boxes, and he executed it perfectly. Mm. I scored it nine rounds to three uh, in favour of Fra um, Cruz. I thought from the first bell, his jab just had, mm. it was just under control behind his jab and you know s stuck to it perfect the, I think the feints were a big a big thing too cause, was cause jabs was the feints you know the footwork uh, every time Frampton was trying to close the distance took the two steps back mm -hmm. when he wanted to engage the few times he did it was when he wanted to and as soon as he wasn't there for the counter if when Frampton went to counter he moved and then he countered in so he, he couldn't have boxed any better you know it was a it was a very 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 good performance given the first fight was a great fight and, you know a lot of people thought um it was very close yep and then this fight was you know a little more uh clear cut who yeah. won as far as leo winning do you feel that a third fight would uh, how do you think a third fight would play i think a third fight would be more the same as the last one i think santa cruz is now got to grips with him and not only that the first fight he had a lot of problems John he had a lot of um, a lot on his mind see ya um, he had a lot on his mind you know, with his dad being um, diagnosed with cancer and, and health problems that's obviously going to play on your mind so when he was in camp for the first fight he was things that he wouldn't have been doing he weren't as mentally as strong as he is he normally is and you know that with your dad having health problems that wouldn't affect anybody yeah, sure. this, this camp he had a perfect camp he's you know he had his dad there with him by his side he got pushed he was training hard you know, doing those little things that he weren't doing for the first fight and it made a difference mm -hmm. I want to ask you uh, another fight in that division, uh, Abner Matas versus uh, Jesus Cuellar, uh, yep. happened two months ago, but yep. that was another great fight, kind another of the reemergence of Matas, what do you yep. think about that? Yeah, he, he you know, a bit of turned the clock back a bit with that performance, um, I know um, Cuellar, how do you Cuellar. Cuellar. Um, he, I know he struggles to make the weight. Mm. Um, he needs to go up to super five weight. He was, you know, I think that had a, a big part to play in that fight. Not taking anything away from Abner Mahrez. He boxed a great fight. Um, like I say he looks sharp. Um, he looks, uh, you know, re, re, re found form under Garcia. Mm. Um, so, the, you know, the, the featherweight division is. He's really hot at the minute. Yeah, there's, some, there's some great fights to be made. You're fighting, you said, in April on the undercard of uh, Joshua Klitschko. Yeah. Who are you fighting? Tell us about your opponent. What do you know? Not, not sure who I'm fighting yet. It's just being finalized. Well, I'm out here. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully it's going to be for final eliminator for the WBA that Santa Cruz has just beat Frampton for. I was going to say, so you are going to be campaigning at 126. Yeah, I'm going to be campaigning. So kind of watching all this, 
you know, do you have your eye on, on someone specifically? I mean, you just said hopefully it's an eliminator for Santa Cruz. Is that kind of who you're going after? Yeah, that's it. I've, I've always wanted to fight Santa Cruz. I think it'd be a great fight. He's obviously Lee Selby as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Cal, Cal, a rematch with Carl Frampton. Oscar Valdez, who's tra who trains out of the gym that we're in now. Mm -hmm. So Abnamares, any of those big fights, Gary Russell. Any, yeah. any, I mean, any of them. He kind of gets lost you in know, the shuffle a little bit, huh, Gary? He does, he does. Um, he's, I think he's got a fight coming up again yeah, a, against Escobedo. Yeah, Oscar it's uh, mandatory, I believe. That's right, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, he gets a bit lost. You know, he's not as active as he should be. Um, don't know why that is, but I think he's a, he's a quality fighter as well. I want to ask you, what is it like uh, for a fighter, obviously, on, on your side of the pond, as they call it, like, when you, is it a big deal when it's like you're going to fight in America? Like, is that, kind of take us with what that's like mentally as far as having to um, move camps and all that. It's, uh, I think it's, obviously you get used to your home surroundings, don't you? Yeah. You know, so when you, if you've got a big fight in America, do you come out two weeks before? Do you do your camp out here? Because um, if you if you don't come out early enough, you know, you it's a different time zone. So it's all uh, which things like that affect different fighters, you know, differently. Um, personally, if it was me, if I was going to be fighting out here, I'd come out here and I'd do a full camp out here. You know, I'd be around. I think you you look at the the talent that's in this gym, you know, the fighters that are in this gym, the quality. You. This is where you can get the best preparation from sparring, coaching. Um, so it's, it is, you do have advantages coming out here, mm. but some people like their own comforts and prefer that. So whatever, I always say a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. So whatever makes you happy, whatever you're most comfortable with doing, you know, that's the best way to prepare.